Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 33, Tony Craig. Tony, thanks for joining us, mate. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Really looking forward to this, mate. Highly recommended by a good friend of yours, David Ford. He said you're the man for a, a good chat in lockdown. Jesus, I hope I don't disappoint him then. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to talk about, as I said. Um, so I hope you're charging your battery. Four spells at the club. Oh, um, yeah. Three permanent, one loan, mill captain, promotion, relegation. But let's start at the very beginning. Obviously, you was uh, come through the ranks at Millwall. Yeah, no, uh, I joined the club when I was 15 years old. Um, just before that, I got released from uh, Wimbledon uh, as a kid and that. And then, uh, obviously, I've done the trials, done trials at other clubs and that, which uh, they all said no. And then, thankfully, um, me, me dad knew Dave Mehmet. And uh, it was the last chance to learn for myself. And uh, Dave was uh, very kind to get me in for a trial. And uh, it was one thing where I just never looked back. It just as soon as I walked through the door, sometimes you just get that feeling that it's going to work. And thankfully, it did. Yeah. You came through the ranks. What other sort of players were at your age group that we might know? Uh, come through, right? Peter Sweeney, Marvin Elliott come through. Uh, obviously, Cherno Sambo as well was there. And uh, yeah. he didn't have uh, many games in that, but obviously a good pedigree as a young kid. Uh, Moses Asher Cody and uh, Mark Quigley and Barry Cogan. So uh, right. there's a few names out. Yeah, mate, very good uh, standard of youth players. But at the time he was coming through as well, a very good standard of first team players. And... That, um, that squad, that 2000-2001 squad, you sort of broke in around that time, didn't you? Uh, good players there, you know, but it was a team of, full of men and uh, good characters. And uh, there was a few players in that dressing room who sort of took me under their wing, you know, and sort of uh, showed me the ropes. And Because uh, as you can imagine, like coming through the uh, youth system to the first team, you're just seeing all the stars and the lights and uh, enjoying it and that. And then uh, you have some players there with steady heads and uh, more or less had to tell me to like calm down, you know, and... Uh, First and foremost, enjoy it. But remember, you are, uh, you, you know, you're here on merit and you deserve your chance. So uh, go and take it. Did you, um, as a youngster, before you got in and got under their wing, did they um, terrorise you at all? So we've had a lot of them on the show and they like to be pranksters as well as a great side. Who's yeah. been clean? Like you said, it was a ruthless change in them. You had to uh, grow up very, very quickly. Uh, I suppose at that time I was a, uh, a young, naive kid with uh, stars in the eyes again and... Uh, it's one of them where uh, if you walked into the change room without asking, you certainly got told to uh, get out and, you know, you know, not in a nice, pleasant way. And uh, it was one of them where I, get, I got put in the kit bag, you know, with the balls, the bleeding chucks around and, uh, and everything like that. But at that time, you literally just took it on the chin. You just, uh, sometimes they hurt you as well, you know, but you look turn around and if anything, you say thanks for doing it and, <laughs> and laugh about it. But no, they were great times, you know, and it, was, uh, yeah. it grew me up. It turned me into a man very, very quickly. Yeah, spot on, mate. Who's, um, whose boots did you clean? Was you on boot duty? Uh, no, I, my boot boy was, uh, well, the ones I cleaned was Stuart Nevercott. Um, he, he, was, he was brilliant. He was brilliant for me. And Timmy Cow, and uh, they were two good characters. But uh, Stuart Nevercott, if there was a speck of uh, mud on his boots, God almighty, he would chase me around the whole training ground to uh, make sure they were clean. And uh, it's one of them where he always left his boots outside the gym every single day. And one day he never left them around the gym, so I just presumed he took them home. So, uh, you, as you can imagine, I've gone home thinking I've done my jobs. All of a sudden, I walked in the next morning. All I hear was, where's Craigie? Where's Craigie? And I'm thinking, that's never caught. I'm thinking, oh, my word, what's he want? Well, he certainly told me on um, um, unpleasant terms that where's my boots and my boots are dirty. I was like, never. You've left your boots there for the same, same place for the past three or four months. He went, you never leave this training ground now until them boots are spotless. And wherever I hide them or wherever I put them, you've got to find them. Well, let's just say for the next two, three weeks, I was hunting the high and low, and some of the places I found them, God almighty, I was there for long evenings sometimes. Jesus, so, no, them two were, uh, were great for me. Yeah, as I say, they're, 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 a, they're a bunch of characters, but it must have been ruthless as well, but a brilliant learning curve as well, especially with Stuart, the defenders like Stuart Nevercott, unbelievable player for us. Yeah, no, he was a, he was a, great, um, a great character, a great leader, you know, and he was catching at the time. So it's one of them where whenever he spoke and you were spoken to, you certainly listened. And uh, mm. it was one of them, you had uh, Neil Harris in there, you obviously had Sean Dyche, uh, Matty Lawrence, uh, Paul Wyfield. So like I said, they were big, big characters on their own. And, uh, but the good thing is you could always pull them to the side and have a one-to-one -one conversation with them. If you need any advice or, or any help in anything, they were there. And uh, sometimes I did pull them and ask for advice and certain things. And they were absolutely brilliant for me. And uh, like I said before, they, they made me grow up very, very quickly. Mm. Well, so you broke into the first team in and around it. I remember Tony Warner, who I know quite well, said, you know, he's a brilliant young player coming through, pushing some good left-backs at the club at that point as well. 
Yeah, no, um, yeah, I believe I made him debut when I was 18. Um, I had Robbie Ryan and uh, Ronnie Ball in front of me at the time. And uh, I'll never forget the day when Mark McGee pulled me to the side and said, like, uh, you, you're going to make your debut, which was a way to Night in the Forest. And uh, the best thing he'd done for me, Mark McGee, was he said to me, first thing, first and foremost, go and enjoy it. And secondly, he went, does your parents come and watch you play? And I went, yeah, I'll be honest with you, they come home and away whenever they can. And at the time, Mill wasn't allowed away supporters at uh, the city ground. Right. So, um, which was fan- which was fair enough and that, but he got my parents two director's box tickets for that game, which he didn't need to do, yeah. but it just made that day a little bit more special for, for me, knowing that my mum and dad have been there for me through the journey, through the, the good times and the bad times and knockbacks and that, and uh, to share that experience with them there was a nice touch from Mark McGee and ones which were, I'll always remember and which I'll always cherish. Yeah, mate, a few of the other boys have said that his attention to detail and little things he did for you as a as a manager, absolutely spot on. Was he a brilliant manager for you in general? Yeah, he was, you know. Um, it, it was unfortunate for me. Um, obviously, I broke through under him, but he, he wasn't there for much longer. Um, mm. It's one of them, I think, was there for a year and a half. But what, he, what he'd done for me, I will never, ever forget. He brought me on as a player. Uh, he, him and Steve Grip, they sort of uh, took me under their wing and they taught me a lot as well. Uh, yeah. Defensively, right in the right position. And uh, it was one of them where... Maybe I was busy myself and I would ask them, where, where do you want me? Where do you think yeah. you see me down attacking, defending? And, and if like, for me, I've never been shy in asking a question because uh, I think it, most information you can get, it can only help you in the future. And uh, it, it's one of them. He, he was spot on with his tactics. You know, He certainly looked in detail in the opposition and, and everything like that. And he was, he was a fantastic manager for North Football Club. You mentioned there your debut. Was it a free, free draw that night, Forrest? Yeah, no, 3-3. Free, free. So it was a, uh, it was a, a mad game. Uh, I believe not enough Forest needed a point to get into the playoffs, uh, I think, that one. So uh, as you can imagine, being an 18-year-old boy, um, very, very slim 18-year-old boy as well, um, and going there. And it's, it's every dream, uh, every, kid, every boy's dream is to make a professional debut. And uh, yeah. some of the boys pulled me to the side and said, right then, you're here, you deserve it, but... You've got to do a good account of yourself, but most importantly, go and enjoy it. And I enjoyed every every moment of it. And uh, it was just, it was pleasing that I could play that one. And then, uh, unfortunately, the Coventry game, the home one after that, and that's the season done. So it just seemed I was getting my rhythm in with first team football. So for me, I was a bit gay that the season did finish. Yeah, it's a funny one because obviously, you know, for four pet sports spells at a club, a lot's happened. And I, in my head, I just think, yeah, you come in, you had this brilliant career at Millwall. But I think it's fair to say, would you agree, your first Spell what it then was a little bit of stop start, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, like I said, I broke through, um, yeah. played under Mark McGee, and then uh, unfortunately, Mark McGee got the sack. Yeah. And then uh, Dennis was coming, and um, you know, some managers rate you and give you a chance, and some don't. And mm. uh, unfortunately, I just wasn't Dennis Wise's player, and uh, he just didn't want to play me. So um, I went on loan to Wickham for three months, yeah. uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and then after that, I, I come back, broke in a, the first team again. Uh, I got off it, played a few games, and then Dennis Wise went, wanted experience. So uh, it's one of them, you know, football. At the time, I was a young youth team, uh, just breaking through a youth team, and come from mm. first team football. And uh, Dennis wanted to uh, take the club in a different direction. I suppose you're, well, you're still quite quite a young pro there. You're not really going to knock on his door either and ask why you're not playing, or did you do that? Um, <laughs> I sort of asked, but it was one of them. Like, I didn't get a, uh, the response to hear uh, and everything like that. But no, uh, he was honest with me. You know, he told me what he thought of me. Um, he, he said to me, I wasn't ready for first team football at that time, which in, he's entitled to his opinion. And that, But again, it's, it's part of football. You know, you have ups and downs. Some managers rate you, some don't. And uh, it was one of them where Dennis Wise just didn't really play me. But for me, I had that three months on loan, played, I think, 18, 19 games at Wickham, which... Again, got me uh, first team experience and one which I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. So just before um, Mark McGee did leave, I just looked at the opening day of the season, 2 0 win against Wickham for the 2003 4 season. Tony Warner, Matt Lawrence, Robbie Ryan, Nevercott, uh, Muscat, Darren Wall, Dennis Wise, Tim Cale, Neil Harris, Paul Whitefield, just so many legends uh, crammed in there. You must have been absolutely pinching yourself at times. Oh, no, no it's brilliant to train with them day in, day out, you know, uh, to play in that. Uh, with the calibre of that players was brilliant 
you know, training with such, uh, such a high intensity. And uh, if you look at that squad, how many of them players have gone on to play uh, Premier League and get some good appearances under their belt. And they've all gone from, uh, well, after that, gone from strength to strength. So uh, it was one name, it was a hard time um, for youth team to break in. in and uh, yeah, But like I said, for me, it was just training every day, but more importantly, learning every day as well. Mm. You said Mark McGee obviously played a big part in, um, in letting me break into the team. Did he give you your first contract then, McGee? Was he the one who gave you your contract? Yeah, he's the one who gave me my, my uh, pro contract. Yeah, uh, I signed that just after my 17th birthday. Mm. Uh, it was one name where um, sometimes you face just fits. And uh, I remember playing Arsenal in the FA Youth Cup. And um, I scored the winner in the last kick of the game. And... Um, it, the yeah, FA Youth Cup for youth team players is a big thing. You know, you've got to sort of shine in them times to show that you are ready to uh, progress to the first team. And uh, and uh, it's just thankfully for me personally, in them FA Youth Cup games back then, I sort of turned up and, and done well in them. So it sort of got me recognised and uh, made me push on to the first team. Yeah, mate. Well, I said, again, I said like early on in your career at Millwall, I just had this memory that it just thought everything went lovely. You come and then you did well. You moved on to, to, to another club. But... So many managers along the way as well. Dennis Wise loses his job eventually, uh, well, leaves the club as well as Theo Pafitis. I think Peter yeah. Savary comes in as chairman and Colin Lee becomes the manager. And it's just, I think I counted at one point about nine managers in your first, first spell at the den. Yeah, no, it was a, uh, certainly a, um, not a good time for the club, you know, after Theo left. And then we had some, uh, a lot of different owners in a short period of time. They were all coming with different ideas, new ideas. And, uh, like I said, it was just manager after manager at that pleasant time. There wasn't no uh, set regime at that time at the club. And it was sort of an unstable time for the club as well. Mm. You know, um, when things change uh, behind the scenes at the club, it, it's hard to uh, to galvanise everyone because some people don't know whether they're coming or going. And that's so it was sort of a, an unsteady time there. But um, it's one then when the manager comes in, whoever it may be, and uh, whatever number it is as well, you just got to be uh, keep your head on the, uh, on the game and... Uh, more or less, you just got to look after yourself sometimes, be a bit selfish and just uh, do a good account of yourselves. And then uh, hopefully, again, you can be in the manager's plans. Yeah. Well, Colin Lee was first up in a, in a shocking season for us. Relegation eventually uh, before this, but 2005, 2006. Mm. Yeah, Colin Lee first up. How was he for you, Colin Lee, in his short, short period in charge? I think it was, um, it was only till December, only lasted. A uh, short tenure there for him. Um, it was one then where trying to think yeah I did, I did play under Colin Lee yeah I, I, I did you know um, he come in with his ideas um, he, um, I'm trying to think it was a sort of a, a, mad, a weird time wasn't it you know I think it was time where some players wanted to leave the older ones and, yeah. everything like that, and then obviously the young players sort of their chance under him so it was a sort of a, a, a mad sort of direction and the, the team was sort of not all together there were some people wanted to go but still playing some yeah. people like myself who were fighting to uh, to establish myself in the team and that. So uh, it was just an, an unsteady time of that era at the club. And uh, I think it showed with the results. And it was unfortunate that Colin Lee got the sack after a short period. Yeah, and then Dave Tuttle comes in. He, he likes you, Tuttle. You played a lot under him, but obviously he would have been part of that 2000, 2001 side as well. Yeah. He was, he was, he was good for me, Tuts, to, to be honest. Uh, he come in. He sort of uh, rallied the troops. Um, he brought a good morale back in. Um, sort of took the pressure off everyone, you know, he sort of um, come in with a smile on his face, laid back sort of uh, laid back atmosphere at the club and that. And um, it, it was one then where it's one then I, I played under him a lot of games and uh, he, he gave me another two year deal, I believe as well. So uh, it's, it's one then where I, I look at Tuts, he'd done my career no harm whatsoever. And uh, I, I did enjoy my time there with him, but Again, it was just like unfortunate where the uh, the club led to that season, which was a uh, relegation. Yeah, such a such a contrast in such a short space of time. Now, you're coming through as a youth team player around a 2001 side. Theo Pafitis is chairman, Mark McGee's manager, and then in in, in three years, it just it's gone absolutely tits up on it. And then at the end of it, I don't yeah. remember this guy, Tony Burns, comes in with Alan McCleary, and we end up getting relegated under them. I yeah. think pretty much the damage was done. Yeah, the damage was already done when then uh, when them two come in uh, again. Adam McCleary, it was my youth team manager, so um, it, obviously I knew the way he, he worked and the way what he wanted the way he wanted me to play. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, Tony Burns was the goalkeeping coach, so obviously um, it's just keeping the job in house for someone else to take over the next season. But I believe they took over two or three games, 
So um, and if I believe correctly, I think they brought a lot of youth in. They gave a lot of youth de debuts and opportunities because uh, unfortunately the damage was already done with the relegation. Yeah, like you said as well, and that can, that can sometimes work in a young player's, player's favour, can't it? You know, you're struggling to get into a, to a flying side then. You know, no disrespect to you, you're still trying to establish yourself. So some of the bigger players, Matty Lawrence, for example, Darren Wall, they want to move on. And that gives sometimes the clubs in turmoil, they have to throw the youngsters in. It actually happened the first time around, didn't it? That's how I ended up um, with Ronnie Ball, Mark Bertram, Stephen Reed. That's how them boys will end up getting their chance the first time around because we went into administration. So although the team was struggling and heading towards relegation for you... It was, it was the sort of start of you becoming an established first team player. Yeah. And I believe that season, I think I played about 35 games that season, yeah. you know, so it was a good amount of games for myself and uh, at my age then. And uh, for me, it's just, you've got to enjoy playing week in, week out and uh, there's nothing better. And uh, it's one then where it not only gave me a opportunity to play week in, week out, it gave other, other youngsters the opportunity to get first team football in the belt. Some, take, uh, some took it, some didn't, but that's just the opportunity you've got to uh, take when it comes to you. Exactly, mate. And coming to the 2006-2007 season, <laughs> Nigel Spatman, possibly the shortest lived manager out of them all so far, didn't last long at all. Oh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, unfortunately, if I, I believe that season, I think he signed about 18 players, didn't he? So I think some ridiculous sort of number like that. It was, a, uh, it was sort of a mad time. It just seemed that every day there was a different player signing. And um, I think he wanted his group only, you know, the new set of players. He, he wanted them. But there was a sort of already a core there, you know. But um, it, at the start, I think he wanted these players first. But I think he see that he needed people who had the Millwall background, who knew what it, what it entailed to, to play for the club. And uh, I think it took him a good month or so to realise that you actually do need players like that who know the history of the club and, and want to play for the club for things to work. And uh, mm. I think um, the time it took him to realise, I think it was too late. <laughs> also, as well, say Peter de Savary was the chairman at this point. It just shows you, you, know, you say, behind the scenes, the club getting run in the right way. Theo Pafitis is a chairman. I know we've brushed over it slightly. He's left the club by this point. But did you have much dealings with Theo? The, the players seem to be um, the ones I spoke to have fond memories of him. Yeah, no, for me, um, I was young at the time. So, obviously, I had conversations with him. And if I see him today, I still would. But it was one in where I was a sort of an up-and-coming player at that age. So, uh, the older one sort of had the close relationship with him yeah. and everything like that. But myself was, um, he obviously had discussions with him. He was a good man. Um, he, he done good for me. And that whenever sort of you need something, you need help and that, he was always there. And uh, it was one then where, unfortunately, I was too a little bit too young to have that sort of close relationship and bond with him. Yeah, yeah. Well, so as I say, the short-lived, he goes. Willie Donoghue takes over to the end of the season. That was big Willie for you. <laughs> No, Willie come in, you know, um, he had his own ideas. Um, he galvanised us a bit, to be honest. And uh, I believe that season we sort of done a sort of a, a charge up the league, if I remember correctly in that. And um, it was one then where he only had it temporary. But obviously the results were that good that he, he had to get the job full time. And um, at the start, at the beginning, everything was rosy. It went very well for him. But it's just unfortunately for him, the way it finished. Yeah. So by this point now, it's eight managers you've had since your, since your very short space as a first-team player. I've, I've written in my notes there, you know, it might have been a tough upbringing and an introduction to first-team football relegation. But do you think that, that held you in good stead going forward when you moved on with your career? Um, yes, of course it did, you know. I think at the time where you, you're so young, uh, you just want to get games under your belt. And, um, but the older players who was at the club were brilliant as well because they sort of took the pressure on themselves. Uh, they didn't put no pressure on the youngsters and uh, every interview or on the TV, they sort of took everything on, on them. Like, it was like, well, we're the older ones, we should be getting ourselves out of it. Mm. And they let us youngsters go out there, express ourselves and more importantly, play with no fear as well. And um, it was just, unfortunately, we just wasn't good enough that year. You know, but the, the older pros were good to a certain extent that season because they certainly took every, all the pressure and uh, relief off, our, off the youngsters and put it on their, on their broad shoulders, which was fantastic for them. You left the club, so in June 2007, you got the road to Palace. Um, how did that come about? Um, the move you wanted? I'll be, I've been late to say that at the time. It was uh, literally a phone call from Willie Donachie one evening saying uh, we've accept, accepted an offer from uh, Crystal Palace for you. Um, and I think it's a good idea and a good move for you to move on. Um, I remember having a discussion with Willie saying, well, 
at the time, I don't want to go, Will. You know, obviously, you can understand that I'm a boy from the area, and I think you've got to understand which sort of repercussions will come back on me a little bit with this <laughs> and that. But um, it's one then where Willie said, I'll give you 24 hours to, um, to think about it and that. And uh, I went, okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, I rang Willie up the next evening. I said, Will, like, I'll be honest with you, I don't want to go. Um, like the, I don't think the move's right for me at this time. I, I enjoy playing for you. I'm playing week in, week out. I feel an important part of the squad. Yeah. Uh, and myself, that I see myself progressing and another two, three years and then, and then see what happens from there. But at this moment in time, I don't want to move. And then he's responsible as well. You've got to go because I've signed Ryan Smith and the money I'm getting from Ryan uh, for yourself will buy Ryan Smith. So at the time, I had a manager telling me that you have to go. So sometimes the, uh, the situation is taken out of your hands and that one it was. Yeah, do you think that man played a part in why it didn't really work out for you at Palace? In fact, you didn't really fancy it in the first place? Um, it, it was unfortunate. I went there, um, I played 14 games and then I dislocated my shoulder. Yeah. So uh, that took me out, that put me out for four months. Uh, sort of had reconstruction on my shoulder and, and everything like that. Uh, Peter Taylor got the sack in that time. Uh, mm. So, God, he's looking a good run at the moment, isn't he? All these managers going behind me here. <laughs> Um, yeah, Peter Taylor got the sack at the moment. At the time, I was injured, and then I come back, and then Neil Warnock was involved, and uh, it was one of them where they was on a good run. Uh, they was they was in the playoffs uh, and everything like that. And then the time I come back, the, um, the damage was sort of done. To be honest, like the team was such a good run, and uh, Neil Warnock was brilliant with me. To be honest with you, he sort of uh, pulled me to the side. Um, he said to me one day, like, time. It was the last day of the loan window. Yeah, close. Uh, he said to me tone like um, someone at your age and as a player you are and I know your personality that you'll want to play he goes I think the best bet is for you to go out and uh, get games um, and he was brilliant you know and, uh, he's a character he's a character, yeah, he's a character. I mean, he was a funny character on and off the pitch and uh, he, was, he was a good man as well but with that loan situation I had a um, he said I've out three clubs for you I had Swansea, Brighton or Millwall and uh, before I opened my mouth he said to me I know what club you've got to go back to and uh, the one you want to be interested with, yeah. And he goes, uh, so if you want to go, you can go with my blessing. And then uh, that's when I went back on loan to me all after that. Yes, you had a successful loan spell, five games. Then you come back and join for another four years. You said that, you know, you originally didn't want to go under Willie Donoghue and the, the repercussions of what that meant. We are an unforgiving fan base at times. Did you get, obviously, you got a little bit of shit when you come back at first or? Uh, yeah, a little bit, to be honest. Uh, but, but like I said, I knew it was coming. Yeah. You know, but I, I, Got broad shoulders myself. Uh, you just got to accept it, and uh, I knew that as soon as they see me giving me a, uh, giving one hundred and ten percent, do yeah. me first take, take someone out, and all of a sudden you got them back on side again. You know, <laughs> so no, it, it was um, at Palace. It was a tough time because uh, obviously um, living in the area, there's people sort of uh, saying it, you know, not <laughs> saying it to your face and all that, which is they're entitled to. You know, I know that I know the uh, aim and how it works and everything like that, but it's one of them where uh, I was just glad, uh, so glad to come back. Yeah, so you, mate, you are, you are I'm not just saying it's cliche because you're on it, you are a middle player through and through. I mean, even the last season, we'll get onto it later, when you when you made that tackle in that game where you chased after the bar and moved to let the ball go and you made that sliding tackle and celebrated like you scored a goal, mate. That's all they want to see in it. Yeah, you know, um, it's one thing. I know my strengths and know my weaknesses, and uh, <laughs> thankfully I've been living out of doing uh, tackles and blocks and that. I wish I could be the, uh, the technically very good player, the winger putting the cross in and getting the goals and all that. But no, uh, it's one thing where I know what I can do, and uh, it's one thing. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I won't change it as well. I thoroughly enjoy doing it, and uh, for me, it's not better than doing the last ditch tackle. Yeah, mate, it's difficult for players as well, especially back then, no social media. And even with social media, players don't really go and they stay professional. They don't vent in the wrong way. So I've had like other players on, Tony Cascarino. Look, every single one of them didn't want to leave the club. But the club said, we're selling you. You can't really do anything about it. You say you don't want to go, but you end up getting a fucking backlash anyway, didn't you? Yeah, no, it was a, um, it was a difficult time, uh, obviously. Uh, it's one then where um, I just speak with me and my family about it as well. Because obviously, uh, they, they know the uh, situation as well. But it is... One then where as soon as Willie said like I want the money and you've got to go, yeah, exactly. I had nothing, no. Choice. And uh, it's one then where uh, I didn't have another choice of another club. It's literally Crystal Palace or nowhere. And uh, it was one then where um, in the end I just remember saying like to me dad like unfortunately like I've got to go and it, and this is sure. that's it. And it, sure. that's football, you know, you know, uh, one minute you want it and the next thing you know, but uh, you're not. But that's how it goes. And uh, you just got to dust yourself down and uh, look after yourself. Million percent, mate. You come back to the club. 
the club, again, so it, it went tits up in a very short space of time, but now it's back on the up. John Berylson's the chairman, Kenny Jackett's the manager. We just, we just about um, avoid relegation that season, yeah. but um, could you see the wheel was turning, albeit very slowly? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Kenny Jackett was a, a very good man manager, you know, forward thinking manager as well. Uh, very uh, in depth. He knew uh, every detail of every opposition and that, but his, his training sessions were spot on. Uh, it was very, very, again, intense, but more importantly, the detail was uh, amazing from front to back and uh, day in, day out. There wasn't no uh, forgiveness or giving up or anything. It was literally his way and that was it. His way or you're out, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah. that's, why he's, that's why Kenny's been successful wherever he's been. You know, obviously he's been to Wolves and now he's doing a good job at Portsmouth. But uh, he's done very well for the club, Kenny, and uh, he's a very, very good man. A very well thought of manager at the club. I say, he's the, chair, he's the manager. John Barrows is the chairman. If you look at recognisable names in that squad, when you came back, Neil Harris back at the club, Alan Dunn, Jimmy Abdu, Gary Alexander, Paul Robinson. It definitely had, obviously, a Millwall feel about it, you know? Yeah, no, like I said, the, the spine of the team there is all sort of mere wall, you know. They, uh, mm. They've they been there for many years and they certainly wear their, uh, their, their heart on the sleeve and that. But uh, it, it's one of them where there's good people all around the place there, you know. Uh, I think they got rid of the players who didn't want to be there and, and everything like that. And uh, he, he signed well, Kenny, and he got, he got the, uh, the backbone correct. And uh, the spine of the team there was uh, sort of all uh, big characters as well. And uh, one which, um, it was good team spirit that year as well. Everyone was sort of in it together and uh, it was fun times. So if we finished 17th that season. I don't think Kenny Jacket was a manager for the whole season, but he, get, he got, as you said, he got the core of it right, the backbone of it right. The 2008-2009 season, another notable um, player comes in. We just mentioned him at the start of the show, David Ford. And you played, you know, it's a big season for us. Playoffs, obviously, you played 52 times that season. Um, good season, yeah. good team. Yeah, no, that was a good season. Again, a, thor- a thoroughly uh, enjoyable season. Um, David Fall was a, a great signing. Uh, we needed a big presence in goal, uh, but more importantly, a, a man, a good man off the pitch. And uh, he was uh, a man which wasn't shy in saying what he thought, <laughs> you know. And if he'd done a mistake, you sort of turn around and uh, you got sort of a growl coming at you. You know, sometimes a goal went in, I ain't looking back there because uh, I know what's coming. And um, it was one then, but everyone was approachable. And uh, we all had an opinion. We all weren't shy in saying it. Um, it never went overboard. You know, some people sort of squaring up to people or anything like that. No, everyone just accepted it. That's the good thing there, that yeah. if you've done a mistake, you hold up your hand and go, that's me. Like, I apologise, but it won't happen again. And uh, it was, um, it was a, good, a good, good core of players and a good, good times. Yeah, mate, we had a very good season. We get to the playoffs, obviously. We face Leeds. Let's talk about them two games. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the first game was uh, very, very intense. Uh, you know, obviously, as you can imagine, uh, we won 1-0. Uh, good good performance and that. Uh, the crowd was fantastic that, uh, that day, you know, obviously from, uh, from start, to min- uh, start to the end. But it was a um, good cagey affair, crunching tackles. I think they had the ingredients of, uh, of everything, you know. And, and, that. and then obviously the, uh, the second leg um, is one then where, for me personally, it's a night which I won't ever forget. It was a, um, it's the first time that I knew I'd be playing at Wembley because every young kid's dream is to play at Wembley. And uh, it was one then where, even that, it still gives me goosebumps <laughs> thinking about it. But we was the underdogs in that, in that playoff. No one thought we had a chance. And uh, we had some good, good players there. And uh, like I said, people didn't forget that James Emery was an important part then, you know. Um, obviously, Dave Martin on the other wing. Uh, Andy Frampton as well. He was a... Uh, Good character, Zachary Bread, and um, it was one then where it was sort of everyone was in it. But there was a belief there as well, which was uh, which was brilliant, and uh, it, it was good to see that all the pundits and everything like weren't giving us a chance in hell, and uh, to to turn up that night and to, to get the job done and to sort of celebrate. Which um, I think well, I don't know how many fans there from me all that night, you know, nine hundred there, yeah, the corner there, and uh, it was just singing songs all night and uh, it was a, a bus journey home which uh, which yeah was a, a very very good good evening that one <laughs> silence, I mean Ellen Road when it's rocking in there mate it's absolutely rocking to silence them and, and get away with a victory and a, and a trip to Wembley you boys must have been on cloud nine. Oh yeah it was on cloud nine you know uh, I remember when they scored the equaliser um, like I said uh, the raw like and um, from the uh, Leeds fan but we got the goal back very very quickly which sort of flattened them massively 
and it deflated not only the fans but it deflated the team as well and uh, it was one of them I think the the, man, uh, the ref that night I think played about seven eight minutes stoppage time I think God I might has this ever gone around like it was just uh, it was mad but thankfully we held on but I think we held on quite uh, convincingly as well I don't think we was um, they sort of we got away with anything there but we deserved it as well so it was uh, it was a good day. Such a such a brilliant time, such a, such a memorable one for the club. But then obviously we go, we go to Wembley. Before let's talk about before the game, the build up. As you said, it was every boy's dream to play at Wembley. What do you remember about the build up? He's just soaking every minute of it, weren't you? Yeah, no, it, it's one of them. Like you, you try and treat it as any other game, but you can't. Yeah, uh, because it's, it's got the Wembley there. Uh, I've been watching Wembley games since a young kid, you know. So to actually uh, walk on that grass was just. It was brilliant and uh, and that, but it was one of them where it was a strange day, you know. Uh, obviously, uh, one, yeah, I've lived the boyhood dream by playing at Wembley, but obviously we lost. And uh, it's one of them, like I said, I suppose Gary Alexander, he, he enjoys that day, but <laughs> I think he was uh, unfortunate. It was just, uh, wasn't our time. Uh, maybe if we'd have gone up, maybe it'd have been a year too early, which, it's, it, which it did show to be. But it's one of them where it wasn't our time, but... Thankfully, we dusted ourselves uh, down and uh, obviously the next season was a lot better. Okay, yeah. What was the... F- I mean, no, obviously, it's a pretty stupid question. What was the, what was the feeling like in the dressing room? What did Kenny Jackett say? Would you remember of after the game? Did he try and galvanise you? Did he try and get you to say, come on, let's go again next year? Or Yeah, no, he just... He, he looked at the positives, you know. I think he uh, looked at the positives through the season. Uh, did people see us where we was that season? I, I don't think so. So I think he said... Well, like I said, we've shown where we can be, but more importantly, next season, I want to go one better and use that next door where they're celebrating, we're hurting, and take that in and sort of use that for next season. Use that as your firepower to move, uh, to move you on, which he did. Yeah, well, a lot of the, a lot of the squad stayed together. Not many um, additions, but one very notable addition. Mirren is quite a close friend of yours. Steve Morrison joins the club. Yeah. Phenomenal player. For yeah, no, great. Yeah, what a player he's been for the club, you know, over the years. Uh, in the spells he's been there, he's, he was a credit to himself. And uh, his goal record was uh, second to none. But um, more importantly, it, it took him a bit of time at the start to settle, if everyone remembers. Uh, you know, uh, he was sort of um, took him about three or four months to to actually get going. And uh, but like I said, you, you see the pedigree of player he was. You see what he was like in training and, and that. And uh, after them a few months, he just... Didn't look back, did he? You know, so uh, he's got an unbelievable record at the club. Yeah, mate. Again, so um, you, at one point in that season, you got the armband. Paul Robertson gets injured, and you, you took over as skipper. It's, it's funny. Robbo was a, uh, a fantastic captain. Mm. You know, uh, again, approachable, but just the presence of him. You know, he's got them sort of uh, aura about himself, and uh, for me, he's, he's a mate for life. And uh, he's one then where, when the Game ain't going right for you. And sometimes you need a player to step up or sort of uh, you can look at, look to your side, left to right. And if you see someone like him there, you think, right, and I've got him who's got my back. So it sort of lifts everyone and galvanises everyone. So uh, he was a, he was a fantastic club for the, uh, fantastic captain for the club for many years he was. Yeah, mate, just, just sorry, just thinking about that team there. You, Fordy, Robbo, Harris. Um, <coughs> was, it like, was there a good social side of you boys as well as the professionalism on the pitch? No, professionalism, of course there was the whole way, you know, but no, uh, off the pitch, yeah, we were very, very close, very, very tight. Uh, we had some good evenings together, which uh, won't be spoken about and that, but no, <laughs> no, it was a, uh, it was a good time. It was a good time to be a, a Millwall player, uh, to be a professional footballer and uh, it's one of them where, for, for us, we were, every day, you know, to, to do the job of your dreams, you, you've got to enjoy it and uh, it's one of them where at that time we, we certainly did, but it's always better to enjoy it when you've got people mates and with football you you play with like hundreds of players over your career and everything like that but the squad you're looking at there there's a, a good number there I'll keep in contact with today so I think that just sums up the sort of uh, team spirit we had then yeah exactly so we go back to Wembley via the playoffs Huddersfield at home remember that one obviously the nil-nil ball draw away but the home leg mate what's an atmosphere yeah no that was that was electric that night you know uh God, I don't think the Huddersfield players want to go to the touchline that night, did they? I think uh, I think they could just see that the uh, the support we had, and uh, again, they were just brilliant. And they certainly were a 12th man that night, and they certainly uh, led led us on. And uh, like I said, there was goals there from Morrow and uh, Robbo. And uh, again, it was just it was a good game for ourselves, a good game plan which Kenny got, and one which we thoroughly deserved to win. But that time it was um, it was different, you know, uh, going to Wembley that time. Um, 
sometimes in football you get that feeling when you know things are meant to be and uh, you walk off the game against other field and it's just like, yeah, we're there. I understand the ones who haven't played at Wembley were sort of, yeah, yeah I can't wait to go to Wembley, but it was a lot of us who were just so focused and determined to get the job done mm. that it was like you didn't have time to celebrate. It was literally like, brilliant, thanks, shake each other and we went home. Like, it was literally just job done, let's move on to the next one, which was obviously uh, Swindon at Wembley. Yeah, Fawley said that second time round, in, in personally, it was more... Not the day out, not the experience as a footballer. It was business. It was yeah. a, a, a desire to get the job done. He said, you lot didn't wear suits. He didn't sort none of his family out tickets. He just went, I'm going there to win this game and get the club promoted. Was you in the yeah, same, no. Same ilk? Where we, we knew what was coming. You know, like I said, uh, everything, the tickets were sorted out. No suits. It was just literally just determination, game day, a normal game, turn up, get the job done, bang, we move on. You know, take the win and move on. It was literally that... Everyone was so focused and on it that, mm. again, you just you just get that feeling, them sort of butterflies. You think this is our time, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you, you just knew that it was our time. We was going to win, and uh, thankfully the, uh, the boys uh, done it, and we we, uh, we got the win. Well, you he went off injured in the game, broken metatarsal, but he's on the pitch. Yeah, super, yeah. Super so it, which um, <laughs> obviously fantastic winning that, but as you can imagine, I broke my second and third metal tarsal that day, and. Uh, it was one then where was, um, I remember the doc telling me, you can't go up the steps. That's what he said to me. Like, doc said, Tony, you broke your foot, you can't go up the steps and uh, lift the trophy. I said, like, doc, I've been waiting my whole life to do this. If you want to think that a pair of crutches is going to stop me doing this, I mean, you've got nothing coming. And like, I was under like all sort of prescription, trying to get the pain down because I was in a lot of pain, to be honest. But it was literally, uh, I hobbled up there and I would have hobbled up there and anything. If I had to crawl up there, I would have done it. And uh, it was... A, it was it still was a great day. That's the funny thing. I've got yeah, pictures yeah. of me at home, me smiling, celebrating in crutches and, and as you can imagine, beer flying everywhere. I was nearly slipping over. So I had to be sort of careful in that. But you're so, you've got to enjoy them moments. You've got to enjoy the good moment in your professional career because you don't know if it could be the last or, or there could be more. So it's literally total. You've got to take everything in here. And uh, I did enjoy it. But then I literally got on the team coach back to the hotel and I had to go to have an x-ray on my foot. And um, obviously, I remember the doctor's face as soon as he took the x-ray, he sort of looked at me and said, oh, that ain't nice. And yeah, my second and third motorcycle were broke clean, like clean break. And uh, I've got two metal rods like, over them now, like supporting it and that. So um, as you can imagine, I'm trying to celebrate that. I've got a broken foot and then I've got to tell my wife we've got to cancel all of these well because I had an operation in two days' time. So uh, Probably the worst part of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can imagine, it wasn't a very nice time that one. But no, uh, like I said, to uh, at that time, winning was everything, and uh, yeah. to have that under my belt as a professional is uh, you take it over anything. Absolute warrior, mate. So I was looking uh, today, doing a little bit of research. I was looking at the photos, and I, I did laugh just because what a warrior you was. Everyone's going mad, and you're all to the side, not really looking at the camera, like just trying to lift your crutches up still, just, just trying <laughs> to give yourself in a team photo. A lot, a lot of pain I was. I remember that. But but no, I thought to myself, I thought, why would I do any more damage? I couldn't do any more damage. You know, like I said, the, uh, it was a clean break and I knew it was a break because as soon as uh, the physio squeezed my foot, yeah, I just, you, some, you know straight away. And uh, it's one then where, again, it was a tackle, which I suppose at the time I didn't really need to go into. Yeah. It was literally a halfway line as well, bouncing ball and then... Uh, as you, as you do, Tony goes for it. And uh, yeah, second and third metal tassel broken, unfortunately. Yeah, mate, but say, it, it was all worth it in the end to get back after the disappointment of relegation a few years early before you left to come back to the club in good times under good management and to go up with a load of your mates might, was something special for you. And then for the next two seasons, it was a good established championship side. Yeah, no, it was a um, very, very good established side. You know, I think the first season we went back up, I think we finished ninth, if I believe. Uh, it was a... Uh, a good team, you know, but it's, it's funny when you go through the play, playoffs and that, you've got momentum with you, you know, and that momentum takes you through for a good month or two and uh, the belief sort of grows every game you win and that, and uh, I think it just showed the, the the players they had who were playing in League One were ready then for the championship and a lot of them went there and expressed themselves and done very well. Yeah, so two, two good seasons and then in 2013... You're on your way again after another four years. You go across the other side of London. You went out to move house once yeah. year, by the way, have you? To Brentford. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was one then where, um, at the time, obviously I was a left back. And uh, at that time, I sort of see the left back game changing. Uh, a lot more attacking play. Yeah. And 
as everyone knows, that's not my strength. And uh, I thought to myself, if I don't move to centre half now, that it could be too late before I take that sort of um, that chance. Yeah. And that, uh, I spoke to a lot of people in the game to say, do you think it's the right thing for me to do to think, right, and I, I'm going to be a centre half now? Um, and that, uh, spoke to Kenny about it. And that because um, Kenny was saying I want more dynamic uh, left backs going at the time, which unfortunately wasn't me. And that, and then um, it was one then where I spoke to Kenny and said, "Well, do you see me as a centre off?" I went, "I see myself as a centre half now." Uh, and what's your feelings on that? Um, he did agree with me at the time, saying, "Yeah, I think centre half is your best position, but I can't guarantee your game time." Uh, so he was brilliant with me. You know, he was honest with me from the start. And that, and then um, it was one then where he goes, Tone, I want you round the place. Like, I want you from, you've been brilliant for me. I don't want you to go in every night. And then there was a situation where Brentford come in and showed interest in me. Mm. And for me, I sort of thought to myself, well, if you want to establish yourself as a centre half now, now's the time to do it. If I believe I was 27 then, 28. And that, so it's one then where Kenny said to me, like, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for you, one which you can go and establish yourself and then uh, go, and get, go and play in the position which you want. And so that's uh, so how that move come about. You, um, what division were they in, Brentford? They were, they were below us, weren't they? League one in then, yeah. Oh, yeah some good times there. I, I believe I saw you on Sky Sports the other day on a, notching a penalty in a, in a vital penalty shootout at the top corner. Is that right? Um, no, it, 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 it personally worked out as a good move there, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, the first season we... Uh, I think the same story here again. You know, we got into the playoff final that year. We lost to Yeovil 2-1. Mm. Uh, and that. And then the following year, we got promoted. Uh, we finished second in the league. And that. And then um, after that season, obviously, we went into the championship. Um, I believe I played 29, 30 championship games. And then, uh, obviously, Brentford in that way, they were going in a different direction, bringing a new manager in. They were going in that sort of money ball situation where they were signing players from stats and everything like that. And then... Uh, it was one then where, thankfully, I got a phone call from uh, Neil Harris, you know, saying, yeah. like, you want, there's a chance for you to come here. And as soon as I had the phone call from uh, Neil Harris, there's a chance to come back. It was like, again, it was just a, a dream to come back and one which um, I sort of spoke with Brentford and then uh, said, well, I want to leave and go back and they and give Brentford their jury. They didn't stand in my way and let me go. And yes, then, mate, back you came under. What was that like for you? Neil Harris, former teammate, he was probably an apprentice when he was a first team player. Yeah. Then he was your teammate. Now he's your manager. What was that transition like for you? I, it was difficult, you know, because like I said, Chop Rain only me uh, teammate. He's a mate as well, a very, very good mate. So uh, it, it was one then where at the start it was tricky calling him gaffer <laughs> and everything like that. But, but no, for me, I've got so much respect for the man. Mm. You know, like uh, he's an absolute legend at the club. His goal scoring is just tremendous. And uh, again, he was one of the, uh, the big leaders for me as a kid. Yeah. And he was certainly one which I sort of leaned to as a youngster. Right. And uh, he certainly put his arm around me and he guided me. And um, as a youngster, I remember him telling me, Tone, like, I'm your mate now. Do you know what I mean? I'm not just Neil Warris, the footballer. I'm your actual mate. So you've got to look at me in a different way. Because as you can imagine, I was like starry eyed look at him every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. every day. <laughs> Shall we clean your boots or anything like that? It was literally just, uh, oh my God, like, this is like Neil Warris. So um, it, it won them where at the start, it was a little bit, it was funny and everything like that, but no, we uh, we knew what was at stake and we knew what I knew what I was brought back for, you know, to uh, to be his voice, to be the connection between the players and himself and that. And uh, it was one then which um, yeah, I enjoyed, I loved playing under him. Yeah, so um, he, he brought you back for experience. He had a very good core. This was when the new core of sort of youngsters started to come through, wasn't it? Ben Thompson, Fred on your dear Murray, no Brian, um, Sid Nelson. Yeah, no, like I said, there was uh, young players there coming through and uh, it was interesting because like I said, at the start of the show, we talked about when I'm coming through. Yeah, yeah. And the boys were taking me under their wing and then they, I thought to myself, now's my time to do it for them. Yes, yeah, right. So uh, sort of one of them, as you can imagine, you've got them coming through and uh, it's funny now because youngsters these days are not as shy as when I come through, you know, they're sort of uh, the voice. Like boot cleaning, was there? You, no one would have been cleaning your boots then. No, like, as you can imagine, like, when I come through, God, mate, if you, you only spoke if you were spoken to. Next year, I know, you've got these boys now taking over the iPod, putting their music on every night. You're thinking, wow, things have changed and that. But that's not only at that's at every club in general these yeah. days. But, but no, I, I found it on myself to give back. Sometimes I think it's good to give back to, to what you've had. And I, I remember the times when I needed a bit of guidance, needed a bit of advice. So 
I sort of pulled him to and said to him, like, if you want advice, you want to speak, I'm always there at the end of the phone. Here's my number. Anytime, any place, I'm here. You know, like, if you want to talk about anything, not only football, stuff off the fo- off football, like you say, if you want to talk about boring things, mortgages or whatever, like, you need advice or anything, I'm there for you, you know, no problem. And uh, I took that upon myself to do that. And uh, hopefully that I'm a person, I'm approachable. And that, and uh, any advice on that, they, they did come to me. So, which was, which was brilliant. And it sort of did remind me of my time when I was younger and when I asked for advice as well. Yeah, you said like, you know, you looked at players' story eyed and stuff like that. I imagine Ben Thompson was doing the exact same thing now, looking at yourself and Neil Harris, wasn't he? Pinching himself. I think he was doing there, he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, again, he, he was one of them people, you know. He, like I said, he's a, he's a Mill fan himself and uh, he's coming in and uh, a good player, by the way. He's done exceptionally well. But as you can imagine, at the start, he, at the start, he was like a boy in a like chicken head anyway, you know. It's just sort of, you asked him and he'd done it. But uh, sometimes you have to sort of calm him down. And I think it took him a little while longer than a lot of people to uh, to realise that he deserved his chance. And uh, given his due, he got his chance and he certainly took it. And uh, good luck to him. So, mate, we had a good season again. Um, you skipped the side. We went back to Wembley, obviously losing out to Barnsley. Let's talk uh, firstly about, uh, I'm just looking at a shirt I've got over there from one of their players. One of the best performances in recent years I can remember was Bradford away in the playoffs. After going one nil down, Joe Martin conceding the penalty. The comeback that day, I just always, always sticks in my memory. Yeah, no, that was a, uh, it was a good game, you know. Um, it was one then where we just didn't, didn't start right. And then, uh, like I said, Joe Martin got back and he got a good free kick, didn't he? Yeah, you know? yeah, and, uh, yeah. One then where, um, again, we was a, a good team, good solid team, front to back, and uh, some good, good players there. And, uh, and uh, we thoroughly did deserve to go through. And, and uh, given that Joe Bradford, we're a good side then as well, and uh, it all, had all the ingredients of a good game, but thankfully we got through it. We got through it, and um, back to Wembley. You skipper again this time, wasn't to be. Barnsley beaten quite comprehensively, really, wouldn't we? Yeah, no, it's just, uh, it was unfortunate, you know, it's just one in days which nothing went right, you know. Uh, we lost Byron Webster in, in the, um, the warm up, obviously, myself, I haven't started a game in. Four, five, well, five, six months. Girls, I was out injured and that. So uh, it's one then where uh, give Barnes and their due. They come and done a job on us, and it just wasn't a, it wasn't a good day. You know what I mean? Obviously, from uh, the first minute to the last, I think they scored in two, two, three minutes, didn't they? So uh, it was just one of them days which uh, just wasn't meant to be, and uh, it's one of them. Sometimes you've got to dust yourself down and uh, move on to the next one. But it, it literally just where nothing went right. Uh, we had to pick ourselves up. Chopper done a, good, a great speech after, you know, and. Uh, because at one point we were sort of struggling that season as well, weren't we? You know, I don't think we, we started particularly well. And uh, it, it's funny because we all sort of, whenever they don't start, we we'll always finish the season well, don't they? You know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it was one then where it was sort of one step too far for us in the end, unfortunately. But it was just one of them days which, uh, as I said from the beginning, just wasn't a good day and one which just wasn't meant to be. Being the more senior player in that squad, did you, again, draw on your own experiences from when you was younger, in the 2008, 2009, you missed out and maybe... Someone might put an arm around you and say, we'll be back next, next season stronger. Did you take it upon yourself to have that yeah, no. of younger players? Yeah, I did take it upon myself, you know. Uh, I sort of said, I said a speech after, you know. Like I said, uh, for me, and um, you take these experiences, you know, these harsh lessons and that they hurt now. But like I said, if you can come back stronger from it, then, then brilliant. But you have highs and lows, and this is certainly a low. And that, but, but like I said, we've got to use this now, this hurt. And we did use that hurt for the whole of the next season. We took that with us. Right, the next season, the 2016-17 season, wasn't it? Yeah. What a season. Cut runs, promotion. So we, ne- we nearly never did it again. But let's start off with a cut run. Um, third round, was it Bournemouth? Fourth round, Watford. Fifth round, Leicester. Yeah, the, the Leicester great one was for you. There's a great picture of you and that Leicester one. I'll just talk about the Leicester game. Yeah, no, that, that was a brilliant day, you know, because they were champion, champions of the year before, wasn't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. they come with a, uh, as not a strong starting eleven and that, but don't forget, they're still beating the champions at that time. And uh, it was one of them, we went down to 10 men as well, I think. Oh, I think yeah, Coops sent off, off, didn't mm. Yeah, didn't he as well? And then Sean Cummings scored the last minute. Um, the atmosphere was electric again, absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's just had every ingredient of a great cup game and uh, a giant game, which, which thankfully we uh, we done. And, uh, to score the last minute and that, and to soak all the pressure up because as soon as we went down to 10 minutes, as you can understand, against the champions, they're going to be coming for you. And I think they did bring all the big boys on. 
at that time. Uh, yeah, they, they brought Vardy on, I remember. Yeah, I remember getting yeah. a bit of grief. Yeah, yeah. So we were certainly under the cosh. And then um, I think at that time as well, we had a lot of games in a short period of time. So mm. we didn't, neither team wanted a replay, as you can understand. Because obviously the pitches were getting boggy at that time and, yeah. and everything like that. So um, no, it was, it was a great game. But I think that, that game summed us up as well, where everyone was on it. You know, everyone was it together. And I think the celebration in the last minute just shows we're all going over to the bench and the management yeah. and cheering on our own and, and, and everything like that. It was just a great, great day. Yeah, brilliant, mate. And obviously, we went on to Spurs in the next round. Um, a, little, a little step too far for us. They were good, weren't they? Yeah, no, it was one of them where uh, you've always got to have belief in any game you do. You know, you got to uh, think, yeah, we've got a chance. And uh, I think that chance went as soon as they put their starting 11 up, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Uh, I remember them looking at it and I thought, yeah, uh, they certainly ain't underestimating us. They're certainly uh, taking us seriously. But it's one of them where it was the last FA Cup game at the old White Hart Lane yeah, as well. Right, yeah, yeah. So um, I think everything was sort of uh, written for them. But it's one of them where, yeah, it's one of them where I think you just got to move on quickly after a game like that and say, yeah, we certainly lost to the better team that day. <laughs> well, I think as well, uh, the little uh, worry I had as a fan was, you know, in the past, we've gone on cut runs and it's distracted us from the league. And I felt at that point, not just the heavy defeat against Spurs affecting our confidence, but the sheer amount of games we was playing yeah. by going further in the cup could distract us from our league push. And we did start to have a little wobble towards the end, didn't we? I was going to just about say that. I think after every sort of cup game we had, I don't think we won. Mm. You know, I think we always sort of drew the next game. So, uh, yeah, it certainly did take a little toll on ourselves. As you can imagine, you've been high and low and then... And it, no disrespect, you can imagine one minute you plan Leicester, the champions, then coming down to playing against Chesterfield or, or something like that. Which yeah, yeah. I know it's easy to say, but it's hard sometimes, you know. Like I said, you're playing against the, the best and they'll say, oh, God, like, Chesterfield, you do like take a little bit, your you foot off the pedal and that. And it, it showed where it could have um, hurt us at the end of the year. But it was one then where, thankfully, we, we did scrape over the line. You know, we got in the play well, cemented our place in the playoffs in the last game of the season. So uh, mm. it was one in the cut run was good, but it could have hurt us at the same time as well. That that last game, mate, honestly, I didn't have an heart attack, I don't know. Bristol Rovers, a collector's item as well, a Tony Craig goal. Oh yeah, I posted it on the line, didn't I, I think, I believe, <laughs> if I remember correctly, but so I'm going to take it. But no, that was a... Um, it's, they're interesting in last games of the season because some teams you think are going to take their foot off the pedal. Mm. And then for ourselves, we're, we're fighting for something here. And uh, in the playoffs, you want momentum. That's what you want. You always want to finish off your last game for the playoffs with a win. And uh, it's one thing where give uh, Bristol their, their due. They come for us that day. And they certainly wasn't uh, taking their foot off the pedal or anything like that. Mm. Uh, I remember their manager, Daryl Clark, I think he was like screaming like, at, their, at their players. And if someone wasn't the player, uh, performing, he was taking them off. And uh, at the time, I, I believe they finished 10th that season, Bristol Rovers. So uh, it was one thing where... Um, it was a good game, uh, a stressful game mm. and that, but um, I know it's easy for me to say now, but once that job was done, you know you're up. I just knew it. Do you know what I mean? As you look in the past, <laughs> like I said, I've, I've lost one, lost one, then lost again, then bang. So it, I know it's easy for me to say now, but I remember telling the wife and that, saying, this is, we're up. Yeah. And to say a bold statement like that, I know it's only to her and that, but that's what literally did come out of my mouth because... You just know. Sometimes you get that bit of luck and it's meant to be. And again, that was meant to be. I feel exactly the same, mate. As I say, from a fan's perspective, you said earlier on in the show, you know, sometimes you just, something happens and you think, yes, yeah, it's meant to be now. To us, we shouldn't have really scraped on the last day. I feel it was better than our league possession, a position suggested, but maybe that cut run did play a part. But when that happened, Sean Hutchinson, it, with the Terry Butcher-esque headband on 85 minutes, I thought, you know what? It's going to happen. Once the script is already written, in it? You know, yeah. and uh, 85th minute... Just about scraping in, we hold. Give, give, we were holding on as well, weren't we? At the end, you know, they were they were certainly uh, putting us under a lot of, lot of pressure. Uh, if I remember correctly, seeing, I think South End at the time were sort of on the pitch waiting to celebrate and and, and everything like that. But no, thankfully we did hold on then. Yeah, and then we go back to Wembley. How many how many Wembley appearances is that now for you as a Mill player? As a Mill player, four. four I've had, yeah, so I've had five in total. So I've been very fortunate. Skipper in the side. Neil Harris, the, 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 uh, the, the gaffer, your old teammate. Was you, um, was you really focused? You said you already believed that the job was done. I mean, you didn't let you know, the other players cotton on to you, how you felt about that. Didn't want to take no, Bradford for granted. It's, 
the games like that, you've got to be confident. You know, you've got to have a bit of belief and everything like that. I'm not, not arrogant, I'm not cocky or anything like that. You've just got to know the job in hand and you, you've got to believe in it. You know, and I was, there's no point, but it, it's one of them which is a day I will never, ever forget. You know, like I said, being captain, leading your club, you sport as a boy to winning the trophy at Wembley is just every single boy's dream. And it's one of them where day every day I think about it, you know, I've got pictures in my house, you know what I mean? Just always constantly going back to that day, even now, again, the goosebumps are coming on the back of my neck and, and everything like that. But, but no, um, that was a hard season as well, you know, uh, obviously not just for me, but my family as well. And um, I've always said that every success I have, I share with my family because they've been there with me from day one. So, uh, and they always see the highs and the lows. You know, people don't see that, obviously, after defeat, you're hurting yeah. or everything like that, you know, and coming back with the ump and, and all that. But I've, I'm a dad, do you know what I mean? But of course, you want to keep work at work. But in this profession, a lot of professions, you don't. Do you know what I mean? You, you do come back. And I, I do analyse myself, you know. I look at every game back and see where I can improve, see where I went wrong and everything like that. So for me... That one was a collection to say, right then, what, what we've been through and everything like that. So like a gift from me to the family to say, right then, no, no, no. And the success ain't just for me, it's for you as well. Yeah, so yeah. that was a brilliant day. And I remember walking down the steps and uh, we walked past my family and it was literally, it was little tear jerkers, you know what I mean? You're looking at yeah, your, yeah. your dad, your, your missus, your kids. And, and everything like that. And they knew what I've been through that year. Let's talk about that, because I'll be honest with you, I'll criticise you at points during that year. You got a lot of shit off the fans at that point. At points. So I say, I, I openly criticise you on the channel, your performances. I thought you could have been dropped to points, mm. but you kept going. You led us to victory, mate. So fair play to you. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing. Like I said, everyone's entitled to their opinion. You yeah. know, that's the beauty of football. Is, you know, some people are going to like you, some are not. But if maybe I wasn't performing at the time, but I knew that I was giving my 110%, I was galvanising everyone, but mm. sometimes the ball doesn't drop for you, you know, some things just mm. sort of doesn't work, or you go through sticky patches and everything like that, so for me, it was literally, stand up, be counted, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I took it on the chin, yeah. you know, I didn't criticise no one, I didn't tell no one, or anything like that, but like I said, my family knew what I was going through, Yeah. and everything like that, so literally just, yeah, come in, I'll, I'll accept it, do you think you know I mean, age at this point as well may, may have been sneaking in on you or not? Because like my boy, my boy at this point was 10 and he used to go, he, he's no good. And I used to say, no, he's, he's fucking mill, great mill player. Maybe he's just getting on a bit now. Do you know what I mean? Did you, was there an element of that there for you, you think? Yeah, but you, you could say that, but I'm still playing now. You yeah, know, 35. Yeah, true, you know yeah. what I mean? So uh, like I said, I just think it was just a period of time which wasn't going well for me personally on the pitch, you know, but I, I turned that around. Mm. You know, and uh, people didn't see that that was me working hard on the training pitch day in, day out, doing extras and every night. And again, I, I believe the more work you put in things, the more joy you get and the more luck mm. you get. And uh, for me, I was just so proud. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was proud of myself that year yeah. because a lot of players crumbled. A lot of players. And we've seen that over the year through middle players that have crumbled and can't hack it. Yeah. So for me, it was a sweet moment that I walked down them steps with that trophy in my arm with my family and say, right, and this is for you. This was for you standing by me. And uh, as one which I will certainly cherish for the day I die. Yeah, as well, not just on the pitch, say, maybe you say you, you criticise your own performances, but as captain of the club, the, the things you do behind the scenes and, and the advice you give to other players that doesn't get seen by the fans as well. You also played a massive part there as well. And that's, that's, yeah, no. I, yeah, like, me personally, I wasn't looking for praise. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't look for that. I, I just yeah. do that. That's from me, you know, that is um, being captain of the club. I knew what's expected of me. I knew that I had to step up, I had to do stuff off the pitch, on the pitch. Uh, I had to give my time for community stuff. I had to give my time for everything. You know, that's part of taking the responsibility of being the captain of the football club. Mm. And uh, but uh, for me, I've never ever been a person look for credit, look for praise. I'm just literally just focused on myself. I'm focused in one direction. That's only looking forward, never looking back. Yeah, and. If uh, so I just take it as a blessing that I'm doing the job of my dreams. I've played for the club who I supported as a kid mm. and everything like that. So for me, I've, I've done everything I wanted to uh, set out to, to achieve and that. So for me, even now, still playing now, I still have to pinch myself at 35 and I'm still playing professional football, you know, and it's one in which I thoroughly enjoy it. I love every minute of it and uh, hopefully long may it continue. So was that your last act as a Millwall player to lift that trophy? Or did you stay in? Yeah, because I can't really remember. To be yeah, honest. I stayed. Yeah, I went. I went in January. 
yeah, I went into January where, um, yeah, it, it was one day, it was a sad time for me personally. Um, I knew when I did discussion with Chopper, that, um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that I, I have to play. I can't sit around on the bench and uh, mm. I've got my dad's mentality, you earn your money, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sitting on the bench, traveling everywhere, training day in, day out. I never took my foot off the pedal in training or anything like that. I always gave my all, always gave my opinion. I was always there for discussions with anyone, anyone who had advice and all that. But for me, it was just, I needed to play. That's what I needed to do. And uh, it, was a, it was a discussion I had with Chopper and that, and I said, Chop, like, if, if I'm not going to play, I need to leave. Yeah. That, I'll be honest with you. And I went, the problem is, Chop, like, if I, I'm not playing now, and in the end, I ain't even going to be on the bench. And what I don't want to do is obviously upset our relationship, but more importantly, I've got to do this for myself that I've got to move on and play because don't You've got get to keep yourself ticking over as well, haven't you? You've got to keep yourself ticking over the game. 33, so mm. I could be out of the game before I know it because unfortunately, in this game, you get forgotten about very, very quickly if you're not playing because it's one of them. I think the managers, some, some managers, look how many games you played the last season. Yeah. So as you can imagine, Travelling everywhere, being there for the boys, but not getting much game time. I don't maybe four or five games till January, yeah. and for me, that's not enough for me. That ain't enough for me. For me, is uh, I want the adrenaline pumping from top to bottom. I want to be doing the tackles. I want to be shouting. That's my release. You know, playing football is my release for the week. That's what I work hard for week in, week out in training, and that it's just to go out there, play football, do a, do a tackle, and I just love playing. And uh, it was literally a time where. We both agreed that, yeah, it's probably the best step for me. Um, give Chopper and the club their due. They did offer me another year for the following year, a lot of contracts and that. But I knew that I didn't justify it. And that, I'll be, I'll be honest with myself. And it was one thing where, unfortunately, I knew that my time was up playing for Mill Football Club, which was, um, it was a sad time for me to say, you know, I won't lie. When, I, when it did come out of my eye, there was a tear in my eye. Of course it was. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think if you look back at my last interview at the club, I think you can see my eyes watering and everything like that. So um, to stand up and be a man to say, yeah, I think my time's up at the club because I could have easily stayed there and just trained and took the money and everything like that. But but that's not me as a person. And, and um, it was one then where um, I appreciate what not only Chopper, obviously John Barrow sort of done as well. And uh, they, they let me move on, which were, they, they were fantastic. Mate, it's so refreshing to hear as well. Maybe, you know, it's just, I don't want to criticise the new era of players, but you wear your heart on your sleeve. You say you want to earn your money. So many players these days are happy to fucking sit in the resis on a nice lump, not play, play a 23s game, go home. You know, just to say you want to be out there, you want to be playing. You, you're, you're sort of the last of a dying breed, unfortunately, I'd say. And, and fair play to you, mate. It was a, um, yeah, it's a tricky decision. You know, for me, them, them under 23 games... They're not for me, you know. I'm not going to enjoy playing in them games. I want, I want a crowd there, you know. I know, unfortunately, we haven't got a crowd at the moment. But no, you, you want to play in front of big crowds. You want to play with people shouting at you and, and everything like that. Because, like I said, where else in the world can you be six foot one and someone shout at something at you, which you ain't going to agree with and get away with it? it ain't going to happen, is it? You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know it, it, it's one of them. Um, I, ju I just enjoy the thrill of playing on three o'clock on Saturday. Yeah, mate. And after me, all you moved on to Bristol Rovers. Yeah, moved there, you know, um, that was a, um, it was a hard one. Um, I had a, a deal agreed with another club, unfortunately, which was in London, but the manager got the sack at the time and uh, it was one then where uh, all of a sudden I'm moving away for the first time. And yeah. um, as you can imagine, uh, my wife and kids stayed in London. Uh, I had a young one-year-old and my daughter was probably seven. So as you can imagine, all of a sudden, daddy, dad's not there every night. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm not there putting them in bed and doing the homework with my daughter and bits and bobs like that. And all of a sudden, I'm in Bristol in a, in a hotel and, and everything like that. So uh, it, it, at the start, it was a tricky time. Uh, it was one end, but it's one end. I'll give my credit credits due to my wife. She was brilliant. You know, like I said, she said, like, I believe in you. Go and do your dream. And um, it's one end. I was there for two and a half years, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And then in the summer, see Tony Craig's gone to Crawley, mate. You've had some career. Fair play to you. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it, it's a great move for me. Um, yeah. I wanted to come back to um, obviously live back at home, which was uh, which was important for me. Uh, Crawley's only 45, 50 minutes in the car. So uh, again, so my family life is, is, is brilliant and that. But it's one end now, I'm 35 years old and uh, I'm 
grateful that they gave me a two-year contract. So I'm there till I'm 37. And uh, it's one that not many players can say they've, they've played to their 35, 36, 37, you know. So um, well, it's one 20, which... 20 year career now? More than that? Yes, yeah, it will be. Yeah, 37 will be. A, yeah. yeah. So for me, as I said, I'm, I'm living my dream, my dream day in, day out. Um, I'm up to 616 professional games now as well. Amazing. So uh, again, like it's just it's just stuff which I never dreamt of, you know. Like when I was a kid, I was, I was realistic. I loved playing football. But did I make when I was young? Did I think I'd make a professional? Of course, I had a dream, but realistically, I didn't think I would. Yeah, you know, certainly the setback at 15 and, and everything like that, and getting turned back by clubs saying no, you're not good enough, and I'm at exit trials trying to like get a club and then, like I said, thankfully my dad knew Dave Mehmet and Dave Mehmet's got me a trial and that just, sometimes it just works for you. So I'm just so grateful for the career I'm having and still going and that, and for me, I just, I just love it every day. Love it, absolutely love it. A little twist in the towel as well, of course, this season, you line up first game of the season against your old club, Millwall. They weren't, um, it was an interesting one, you know, like I said, it's my debut for Crawley, but uh, is it a nice experience? No, of course not. You know, it's just one of them days where uh, I'm getting grief from my mates and uh, everything like that. And uh, it, on the day we got beat, beat convincingly. But for me personally, it was nice seeing some good old faces and that, which I ain't seen for a little while and that. But it was a day which, it was unfortunate fans weren't in there as well. You know, yeah, like yeah. I said, it'd be nice to see the away support there and, and, and everything like that. But it's one of them where, it was a day where you sort of want the day over, if that makes sense. Not in yeah, a whole yeah. way, just one of yeah, just get on and move on to the next one. But no, we certainly got a bit uh, beat convincingly because uh, Rowett's well, got a very, very good side down there at the moment. Yeah, I bet being the professional you are as well, it still fucking hurt, didn't it, to lose that game? Yeah, well. <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Convincingly, yeah, of course he did, you know. But no, um, yeah, it was one of them at the start. We were we were in it. But then once the uh, they turned it on, uh, we, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, yeah. we done a little can. Was, but yeah, it I think it's the last time we managed to score three goals in a game as well. We can't seem to get that for a minute. But um, a long time at Mill, a brilliant career, as we said. Um, you are just, you just typify everything about Mill. You just, you just got it in you. And it's just, you say you can't always teach that to people. But the question I always ask at the end as well is if you go out tonight with three of your old Mill teammates for one last night out, you can only take three of them with you. Who are you taking? Oh, with? that's an easy one, that one. Okay. New Harris. Paul Robinson and Gary Alexander. Yeah. The ones I look out the night out with, yeah. They're a um, good, good company. Uh, certainly don't let you down any time I've been out with them. It's always been a great, great evening. Um, we've got some great towels between us, but they will certainly stay private. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, mate. All right, mate, listen, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Really appreciate your time. And uh, good yeah. luck, mate. Keep going, keep playing. Brilliant, mate. No problem. Take care. Top man time. Cheers, mate. Thank you.